point of view. You just got home from a long day of work and or class and you are exhausted. It's all right though, because you bought yourself a brand spanking new game that you have been looking forward to for months. You throw that bad boy in and boom, hold up. You don't have enough memory to install it. That's all right though, you can just go delete something you're not playing anymore. Oh wait, another problem. You only have like, I don't know, two games there and somehow they're taking up 90% of your memory. How is this possible? Okay, okay, calm down. Just delete one and you can finally play your game. 90 hour, wait, what, how, who, when, why, what, come on. This is the video game memory problem. Now my memory might not be the best, but I sure as hell remember a time when fitting a new game on your console wasn't as difficult as getting into an old pair of jeans from oh. middle school. And I am willing to bet anyone who's played a game in the last 10 years can probably relate. But how did we get to this point? And is there any way to stop this absurd trend? Let's kick this off by putting perspective on just how bad the issue has gotten. The year is 1977. MASH is still smashing, a spunky new series called Star Wars just hit the big screen, and you and your boys are gonna go tear it up at the local disco club to ABBA's latest song, Dancing Queen, later on. Oh wait, no you're not, there's a horrible snowstorm and you're all stuck inside. Thank God Trevor's mom just bought this goofy little box called the Atari 2600. Isn't it so cute? I don't know, dude. It just doesn't seem that fun to me. How could you possibly say that about the console that helped bring the arcade experience to homes all across the world? Popularizing swappable game cartridges, the largest of which coming in at 32 kilobytes. Why, why do I need to know that last part? Still not kilobiting on the idea? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's jump five years later to when the NES drops. Whose games on average were 256 kilobytes? That is eight times larger than the biggest game on the aforementioned Atari. We have officially gone from one slice of pizza to the whole damn pie. Hell, if we summed the memory of all of the NES's games, it would come out to 237 megabytes or at least according to an extremely reliable and totally trustworthy source that is Reddit. Okay, I'll just play the stupid game, will you please shut up? Big time jump, a little over a decade later, and not only is Nintendo still kicking butt, but they are now happily in a relationship with Sony. That's right, these enemies were once lovers. That was until Nintendo cheated on Sony. Heartbroken, Sony says, screw it, I'm gonna do what you do, but better, and proceeds to drop the bombshell that it was pregnant at the time of splitting up. The baby's name, the PlayStation 1, and let me tell you, this was not gonna be PlayStation fun for Nintendo. Not only did this give birth to a nemesis for decades to come, but the PS1 was also the first home console to popularize putting their games on optical disc, specifically CDs. This might not seem too consequential, but there is a reason cartridges had to ditch the video game industry for vapes. CDs were both cheaper and here's the big one, they could store way more information. For context, the N64 would release the following year and its games would be limited to a 64 megabyte ceiling that resulted from them still being on cartridges. Standard CDs, on the other hand, came in at 700 megabytes. That is over 10 times the storage capacity. That's the same factor separating the population of Itty Bitty Rhode Island from Georgia. The state, not, not the country, I checked, I checked that one, it's the, it's, the, it's the state. But consoles were still very incomplete from a hardware standpoint, as they had no internal means to store save data after powering off. Up till now, this data was either put directly on the game cartridge or on another form of swappable hardware called memory cards. This essentially meant consoles were Zach Galifianakis in a hangover movie, aka they black out and not remember shit unless someone told them what happened. Or such was the case until 2001 when the original Xbox showed up and said, Hey Sony, you like CDs? Well CDs nuts, son! Ha! <laughs> Got him! And, and uh, by, by nuts I mean hard drive. I mean this dedicated hard drive. With which this bad boy could store up to 8 gigabytes of data without any add-ons. In turn, games for this console jumped in size, coming in at 2 to 5 gigabytes on average officially dawning the era of a new prefix. To make matters even more complicated, the Xbox also headlined the way for consoles to connect to the internet. 
making it way easier for games to be updated after release. These updates would just further increase file size. This is where we pretty much enter modern hardware. Yeah, hard drives just got hard driven out of consoles recently, but I'm gonna talk more on that later. For now, the big thing to focus on is this triggered a cold war of sorts. Each successive console kept upping their internal memory, and the next thing you know, we have gone from 20 gigabyte models to ones with 500 plus in the blink of an eye. And of course, with more real estate available, games couldn't help but grow in size too. To get an idea of how badly they explode in the recent years, let's look at this handy dandy chart TechSpot made. That's right, this right here is more than just dots, my friend. An amazing article by TechSpot looked at the recommended storage space for 10 AAA titles a year, going all the way back to 2007. Yeah, the ambiguity as to what game they picked could definitely be skewing the data here, but given how AAA titles tend to run the market, I still think it's a decent enough sample size to visualize how memory requirements have changed as of late. The big takeaway I had from it was that things were pretty steady up until 2012. From there, bada bing, bada boom, the trend starts skyrocketing and we go from an average of 11 gigabytes to 80 in a little over a decade. What in the world triggered this? There's multiple reasons behind this surge in video game memory. Holy shit, I've said that word a lot. If you are taking a shot every time I have said memory, please go to the hospital. You cannot be doing well right now. Anyways, the first and most prominent reason is cheaper hardware. As mentioned earlier, hard drives and similar tech use for permanent memory storage used to be really expensive. But with more and more breakthroughs, the price on these fellas is dropping like test scores in Mississippi. Mississippi, how the hell are you at the bottom of like every major metric? It is genuinely impressive how they are bad at everything. Mississippi better Mississippi, come on. Back to the main topic. I found a handy dandy little graphic from a company called Backblaze who not only has a name that took me nine attempts to properly say, but is also a head honcho in the cloud storage industry. You see, it goes without saying that to be in cloud storage, you have to buy a lot of storage. Thankfully, these fellows have tracked the cost of each hard drive they have bought over the years. The results lay before your eyes. Yes, I know, it's kind of gross to look at, but with a little bit of explanation, it will make sense. You see, the demand for storage has increased over time. So, every once in a while, good old BB over here decides, You know what? This isn't worth it. We're going bigger, baby. Give me the upgrade. And they start buying memory in larger chunks. Regardless of size, there is one thing that can be consistently tracked across all these hard drives, and that is their cost per gigabyte. And Giga boy, oh boy, the difference is crazy, as the average in 2022 was almost a tenth of the cost in 2009. This might not seem like anything too significant, but let's do some quick maths. For most of this time period, we were on the PS4, which came with 500 gigabytes of hard drive space by default. In 2009, while the console was not out yet, that would have cost $57. At 2022's rate, that would have cost $7. Now, $50 in savings is pretty nice in its own right, but keep in mind that would be the savings per console. These bad boys are made to sell millions, so you take that $50 saved and multiply it across every model you sold, and holy moly, we're now looking at a number here that our feeble little monkey brains can't even process how big it is. Small note, this decline in hard drive prices has to be taken with a grain of salt because the industry has largely replaced them with SSDs as can be seen with the latest PlayStation and Xbox models making the Switch, alongside most gaming PC builds. What are these SSDs? The acronym stands for Super Super Drive. Ha! <laughs> Just kidding. I got, I got you, you little bozo. I got you, I got you with that. It stands for Solid State Drive. Why is Solid Snake Driving? That right there is too technical for this video. Just know that they serve as a different form of permanent memory than HDDs, and they're faster, but more expensive, than the latter. Because of this improved speed and their pricing going down as well, they're the new norm. Permanent memory isn't the only hardware that's taking strides too. The evolution of the physical medium games come on has also played a large role in the memory hike. Remember when I mentioned how the leap from 64 megabyte cartridges to 700 megabyte CDs was a huge leap? Yeah, well that was just the tip of the iceberg, buddy. Optical discs, like CDs, eventually moved on to DVDs, and even later, to Blu-ray. Some of you were probably looking at the ceiling for Blu-rays, aka the usual standard for video game discs nowadays, and wondering, 
Hmm, wait a second. I have games that are larger than that. How do they fit on the disc? Am I just buying a glorified license to download the game? And that right there, like a taco from Taco Bell, is a loaded question. Let's break her down into parts. First, how do they fit on the disc? Well, I'll question your question with an answer. I mean, <laughs> I'll answer your question with a question. Have you ever made or had to interact with a zip file by chance? That fella right there is a compressed file, which, long story short, is a file that has been squished into a tinier space. Games are files and they can be and are frequently compressed. In order to use the file, it must be uncompressed, at which point it will be larger. Second, for the most part, no. The physical copy isn't just a right to download the virtual version. I'll admit, when I initially came up with the topic for this video, this was my opinion. But after a bit of research, I realized I was wrong. While long downloads upon booting up a game initially might make it seem otherwise, this process is simply the game installing itself onto your permanent memory, rather than downloading itself from the online store. This can happen entirely offline, assuming there's no patches. Albeit there is an asterisk on that that is growing more and more nowadays for reasons that I will circle back to in a bit. Before moving on to that, I want to address why we install games to internal storage now. As there are likely some of us who remember a time where, Jesus Christ, I sound old, you could just throw in a game and it worked instantly. Furthermore, with the disc being able to store as much as they can, you might be wondering why we don't just keep the file on the disc. Well, the reason is actually pretty simple. We installed a permanent memory because it is faster to read than reading off the disc. Eh, uh, uh, wait, here it comes. Here's the damn asterisk I mentioned. Yeah, so <laughs> it is becoming more frequent for games to download patches alongside their install. These patches can be anywhere from minor bug fixes to massive chunks that are required to do anything significant. Some titles take this a step further, effectively becoming a glorified right to download. The latter being shown with Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, which only had 70 megabytes of data on the disc, despite the game being 150 gigabytes after initial downloads. As I said earlier, this isn't usually the case, but there are always exceptions, and goddammit, Call of Duty, like Mississippi, loves to make an ass of itself. Thankfully, we have resources like DoesItPlay.org, which puts games under extensive testing to see if they need any downloads or online connection to run properly. Thanks to this tool, I was able to see many games that I thought required large downloads did not whatsoever. However, none of this still fully explains why games are taking up so much space. Sure, we have the tech to store larger games now, but why do we have to use it all up? If we could fit super elaborate titles like Tears of the Kingdom onto 16 gigabytes, surely others like COD, Starfield, etc. don't need to take up 100 plus. Quite frankly, optimizing for memory is hard. Anyone who's dabbled in coding can tell you it is one thing to get it working, but to make it work in as little lines as possible, nonetheless messing around to conserve memory without breaking the damn thing is an absolute pain. Delete one snippet and boom! Half the characters are stuck in T-poses and you have no clue why because the part you deleted was just supposed to control the color of clouds! Throw in how the business side of the industry loves to announce games way too early, putting more pressure on the developers to get a half-working curmudgeon on shelves ASAP, and it is no wonder why there is less effort to shrink the size of games down. That and an increased emphasis on graphics and audio as of late have really added to the fire too. For example, you might have noticed how a lot of games let you pick a language at the start. In games with a lot of dialogue like Last of Us 1, this can add up fast. In total, all the speech files for that title take up 8.5 gigabytes of storage. That alone is more than half of the aforementioned Tears of the Kingdom. Now, the solution here is obvious, right? We just make every game have one language, everyone speak in Latin, and boom, gamer crisis solved. No file is greater than 10 gigabytes, and you don't have to do your Duolingo lessons anymore because everyone speaks the same language now. Everyone wins! Wrong! As nice as that be, there are bigger fish to fry. Graphics are even worse. Take a look at Fortnite and you'll see its extra features include several graphics-related packages that add up to north of 40 gigabytes. Furthermore, unlike audio, certain graphics don't like to compress well, making install files even larger. And with resolution and screen size ever increasing, the load that textures add to the file size is only going to grow. Thankfully, like the aforementioned Fortnite graphics packages, some game companies are making these optional to help mitigate the issue. 
Another example being Diablo 4, which has an option for you to download the 4K assets for the game at the cost of 40 gigabytes. Is this the only way we can combat this problem though? Are we doomed to ever ballooning game sizes? Will I finally stop pushing off watching The Sopranos? Rest easy gamers, let me console you that there is more that can be done. See what I did there? That was good. That was good. Come on. Give me nuts. Give me nuts. You know you want to. Come on. Come on. Come on. One of the solutions is reusing assets to take an even larger bite out of file sizes. That? That I'm on fire, baby. No way. Please don't click off the video. Please, I'll stop. I'll stop. I promise. I promise. But yeah, this is a common technique used by game companies already, with notable examples being from software and Nintendo titles. Plus, it's a win-win for game companies because if you get good at it, it saves you from having to make more assets. Sure, it takes a little bit of creativity to do, but come on, you're game devs. You're creative by nature. You got this, I know you do. Another way we can bring file sizes down is through improvements to file compression. However, that is easier said than done. This depends on the creation or modification of pre-existing algorithms, and that is a doozy. Throwing out companies are incentivized to minimize, and yeah, Game devs probably won't go this route. Thankfully, it seems like AI might be able to help in this regard. With recent advancements in this field, some companies are using AI to search for new techniques to old problems. One of which being audio compression. For example, Meta, who I cannot believe I'm going to say something good about, has a little research blog where they discuss an AI-powered compression tool that is apparently 10 times more efficient than standard MP3 encoding. So there's definitely hope on the horizon. We're gonna need it though, because I suspect a tipping point is coming in the future. As the gaming industry slowly shifts to an all digital medium, these 100 plus gigabyte monstrosities are gonna have to be downloaded over Wi Fi. And not all of us are blessed with the hottest, fastest 5G super connection. Some of us live in more rural areas or have slower download speeds, making it unfeasible to do these massive downloads. I know I've already suffered in this regard, and I know others have too. While stumbling and bumbling about doing research for this video, I ran across a Reddit story about this exact thing. In it, there was some dude who was unable to play Hogwarts Legacy for days because they live in quote unquote bumfuck nowhere where the Wi-Fi infrastructure simply isn't there. As a result, they had to rely on their phone's hotspot to do the download. So not only did this take forever, but it ate up their entire hotspot limit. Like game memory, this is gonna be a growing problem. And at some point, it might affect enough of the market to force game companies to start caring about file size again. However, I realize they probably won't give a shit, and this might lead to the hobby becoming exclusive to those with premium internet. That's a sad future. While I barely have time to play games anymore, they were a big part of my and many of my friends' childhoods, and it would suck if we cut out anyone from this experience simply because they can't ship a Titanic-sized file to their house. Where was I going with this again? Ah, whatever. My memory's not the best.